consider this an easy button for creating. I need Christmas cards today, and I thought that I would take you along with me and show you exactly what I do when I need to come up with ideas. In fact, I'm gonna show you how I triple my ideas from just one photo. But what I really want you to see is how I get from inspiration to that final step, because that way you can do exactly what I do and get creating yourself by the end of the video. Let's dive right in. This is a go-to tip for any day, but especially for those days where you're struggling to be creative, because that's really been me lately and I've needed to tap into the skill that I'm gonna teach you today. It's always more fun with friends, so I decided to drag my friend Ardith along with me. Not that I really needed to twist her arm. She loves Christmas just as much as I do. But first we need a starting point. So I went to my go-to, which is Pinterest, to get inspired. So to get started, I thought that I would pick a picture that I kind of connected with. Now I'm connecting to this picture for a few reasons. I'm kind of struggling a little lately, and so I figured I don't want to make this more difficult than it needs to be. I needed something that had a lot of different elements in it, just in case I felt like I needed to change my mind. You know, you don't need to make things harder than it needs to be. Set yourself up for success. I'm a huge believer in setting yourself up for success. For me, I really love so much about this photo. I love the coolness of it and the warmth, if that makes any sense. I'm drawn to the repetition of three, the three Christmas trees, the three homes, three little bulbs up here. You'll see a repetition of odd numbers throughout it. And for me in design, that's a very key element. It provides balance and just a calming sense when I look at all the elements on a card. I'm drawn to the colors. The colors are a little bit more on the grayish side, whether that be warm gray, cool gray, there's neutral white, there's some really beautiful brown tones in here, and even some green. Now, being that this is a Christmas project, I do plan on incorporating red, so that's gonna be a little bit of a twist for me. I'm seeing the knit patterns, which are just gorgeous. Of course, the trees, you've got the beautiful ornaments. You know, you, this image actually has a lot going on that you could pull from. One of the things that I really love, the feel of the vintage bulbs and the frosted tree. The frosted tree for me is a way for me to connect and that's something that I want to bring in because my mom, she used to frost trees when I was a kid and I loved all that white on those trees. It was really something that was truly magical. So I want to try and incorporate that if I can onto a project. I really feel that connecting with your work and connecting with what you're doing and the people that you're sending things to, it just takes your art to another level. And I definitely want to do that. And I can do that by pulling from this picture. First up, I like to sketch. Once I have my elements written down, I take what I see, I start eliminating kind of what do I want to incorporate, what don't I want to use. I take a look at my list and I figure out where I'm heading. I make a couple really quick rough sketches of some potential designs, something that's coming to mind, and I kind of go from there. There's so much here. Let's get started right away on our first project. I think for the first card, I'm gonna focus on the patterns. I wanna kind of incorporate this knitting. I have this really cool new background stamp by Katherine Pooler, and it's like this cable sweater. And I thought that that would be very cool. It's just kind of sitting in the back of a project, not really as the star, although it could be the star. To use that in something where I'm planning on bringing in three trees, for instance, I need that to be kind of a little more in the background. So to do that, I'm going for like a distressed feel. So I'm gonna lay my cardstock on top, but in to get that feel from it, which also kind of ties in that vintage kind of feel for me, I'm gonna very lightly touch it as I'm laying it on the background stamp. Because that way I'm not gonna lift up every single part of it and that's gonna help knock it into the background. For the trees, I wanted to use a particular die set. This die set has lots of different Christmas trees in it. It has coordinating stamps that you can mix and match, but I wasn't like drawn to those designs for this particular card. I wanted something that had a little bit more, more of a cleaner feel for me. I wanted one of the designs and the other two, I decided to pull in some stencils. I think partial stenciling is a great thing to do at Christmas time. You can create some really cool stuff 
And it's something that I've shown here on the channel before, but for this purpose, we have some really small trees. I chose some different shapes so that the card had some interest. And by using these stencils, it's taking this design to a whole nother level. And this is another reason why I wanted to knock that background stamp into the background. Now, even though the green used in this particular photo is kind of the same feel, I wanted to go with three different greens on the card. I definitely wanted to incorporate a yellow green. That gives it a little bit of warmth, a little bit of an edge to those other colors, which are a little bit more traditional. And I thought that that added a fun flair. One of the key things that I always like to do with my cards is add those little finishing touches. So some very simple ink blending on those corners just really helps draw the viewer in and that to me is a, a really important finishing touch. I wanted this card to not have any embossing, not have any glimmer paste or anything like that. No extra mediums, keeping it really straightforward and clean, kind of like the photo. And that's where the inspiration went to actual creation. For the second project, I thought that it would be kind of fun to incorporate the glitz and the glamour of the ornaments on the tree into the project by making the entire project sparkly. We're going to use that same cable knit sweater as a background, just stamping it in a traditional embossing ink, and then we're going to go ahead and emboss that, but using a WOW embossing powder that really just has that frosted snow feel to it. If you're going to really have that kind of be the star. To me, just really a solid sentiment in front because you don't want to have too much going on in the card. So since that's really the star with all that sparkle in the background, I just thought just using the word joy in the front would be fun and subbing out the O in this for one of the ornate ornaments by Penny Black. I just went ahead and stamped that and embossed it in the new Cranberry Fizz. And to tie that in, I also went ahead and did the entire base of the card in the same color. Now, the cool thing is you don't really need to do the entire card. You can just incorporate the edges. And that's a great way to kind of stretch that without needing to buy your own glimmer paper or glitter paper. Another cool thing is when you're creating those elements, don't just think that you have to do the entire thing in one color when you can only stamp it as one image. Just hold it at an angle and do the top, say, in a platinum and the bottom in the sparkle, and that way you get the best of both worlds. I wanted the joy part, the J and the Y, to pop off a little differently. So I thought that I would pull from the gray and the cool feeling of the photo for that, and I used a textured embossing powder for that. Started off with the Seth Apter Etched Platinum, but I wanted to take it to a different level. And that's where you're gonna add a little bit of the sparkle platinum. Don't ever feel like you have to do everything in one image. I love using this little dauber tool for embossing. It adds an interesting look to the card, but at the same time, it gives me a lot more control and not really adding a hugely dense application of embossing ink, because if you were to just swipe your ink pad, you get big clumpy areas. Using this dauber tool gives you a lot more control, and I love that when needing to add little tiny elements to cards like this. You can really see we worked in the knit pattern again. We also brought in a little bit of the ornaments from the tree, as well as some of that vintage kind of feel, the coolness of the entire image in general. I think this card looks great too. Now for this last project, this really is a special one. And I did end up having kind of like an aha moment hours later after it uh, with Ardeth online, which kind of came out of nowhere for me, but I'll get to that in a minute. I really wanted to use these trees that you see here on the shelf. And I really, the silver of this one, I'm just so drawn to it. I don't know what it is about it. It just makes me happy just looking at it. And I felt like I needed to have some embossed trees. Decided to first use these couple colors. So first you can see that I created this huge piece. After cutting some trees with this beautiful sage, I decided to do some in white and some in that kind of liquid platinum, which is so pretty. And that's the sparkle version of it. I ended up adding some of the bigger granule of the white powder that WOW carries, which is so fun to be able to add some different textures and like thicker blobs on your embossing. Treat it like a little deer in the woods. It's very skittish 
you gotta come at it from the bottom first. And when you're doing that, then you kind of get everything activated and melted to where it kind of grabs on because embossing powder is not enough. And I'm just dropping it on top. Once you have that, start with your embossing gun a little further away, bring it a little closer, and eventually that'll melt. You'll probably blow some off, so add a little more than you wanted, but I love the end result. I really wanted to get that staggered look of the trees, different heights. You know, and it was okay to just have kind of a glimpse of a few of those. Kind of positioned them where I wanted them to be on the card, and that was gonna be the front. I wanted to have something coming up from behind, and that's where this fire kind of came into mind, and also the glow behind the trees. I thought, why not bring a pattern up out of the trees and that's really where that inspiration came from so i took this boho stencil design i love this stencil you know you don't always have to take snowflakes and other things you can take patterns that you're just drawn to that you love there's no reason it can't be on a christmas card just wanted to keep some really light tone on tone stenciling going on there with that faded out towards the top part and that way it allows my greeting to stand out as well now the greeting is also embossed, but this time with gold. And this is a textured gold by Seth Apter. And I, this Mary is by far my favorite Mary that I have in my die stash. I have several and they're all great, but this one is a little special, I think, because it's so compact, but yet it has that fun character of that handwritten font and then just that little tiny Christmas below it. You don't always need to overdo the sentiments. And I think a lot of that for me, when looking at at this image again it's clean you know there's a lot of white space so you can see in this card even though we have a stencil design coming up out of the trees there's a lot of space and that's really important now this is the project the more I looked at it it really felt like it needed something so it was a little too bare at the top and that's where I got to bring in that frosted feel and I thought how do I do that on a card? How do I translate that without it just being like a stark frosted edge? Because I wanted it to be like it was really like my mom used to put on the needles, how they would just latch on and grab those needles and it was just kind of a, a fun flocking kind of feel. So again, I went to the Ranger Dabber, the embossing dabber that they have. I have lots of different ways of adding embossing uh, ink to a project, but this dabber, again, it's that sense of control, being able to do a very quick light swipe. That light swipe is the key. And I really wanted it to just kind of have the top third of the card. And that way, I used two embossing powders. I did a little bit of that white, as well as some of the liquid platinum. So you have a little bit of sparkle in there. You also have some really neutral tones. You bring a little bit of that metallic up from the trees. Again, there's that repetition. I'm incorporating liquid platinum three different ways. Two trees and it again at the top. Those type of things that kind of tie the whole project together. And this project for me, one of the things that actually kind of took me by surprise hours later was I didn't realize how much fun I was having. I truly had fun creating that last card. And that's something that has kind of escaped me for a while. You know, life kind of takes over and it suppresses the joy in things sometimes. And sometimes you just kind of have to get lost in what you're doing in the moment and enjoy the sparkle. You know, and I'm not a glitter person, so it's funny to hear those words come out of my mouth, but the WOW embossing powder, it made me just happy. <laughs> and so the whole project was just a fun experience. And that's really, at the end of the day, for me, that's all I need. You know, I don't have to be Monet every single time. I can use a photo as an inspiration, as a starting point, translate that into something else. I now have lots of different other ideas because I have a list of things to pull from. I'm linking now to Artith's video, and here's why you want to watch it. Artith has this acronym, and it's like a little formula. And it's a great way to break down, whether it's a card, whether it's a photograph, whatever. It's so valuable, I know that you will love what she does with her photo. Her video is right here, and I'm also linking a playlist to more Christmas inspiration below.
Thanks for watching and thanks to all my patrons for making this video possible. See you next time.